Welcome students. This session is for BA second year English literature paper first. And in this session, we'll continue with this poem, The Love Song of J. Alfred Prufrock by T.S. Eliot. Let's have a recap of what Eliot is trying to say through this poem or his style of writing. Prufrock is a variation on the dramatic monologue, a type of poem popular with Eliot's predecessors. So students, in my previous sessions, I've already talked about what dramatic monologue is, and uh, Eliot has used this dramatic monologue, this form of writing, with a little variation. Dramatic monologues are similar to soliloquies in play. So when uh, we look in the plays, they are in the form of soliloquies, like one person is speaking, and in the poem, they are in form of dramatic monologues. Three things characterize the dramatic monologue. According to M. H. Brahms, first, they are the utterances of a specific individual, not the poet, at a specific moment in time. So if we uh, try to uh, understand what dramatic monologue is, first of all, they are utterances of a specific individual, and that individual is surely not the poet. So poet usually creates a character in the poetry that speaks at a specific moment in time. Secondly, the monologue is specifically directed at a listener or listeners whose presence is not directly referred but is merely suggested in the speaker's word. So in dramatic monologue, what happens is that there is a listener or a presence of listeners around, but uh, who are they? Their presence is not directly referred, but we can know uh, just by the utterances of that speaker that somebody is there as a listener, some, some presences are there. Third, the primary focus is the development and revelation of speaker's character. And the third thing that happens in dramatic monologue is that as that character speaks in the poem, uh, uh, his character, his, uh, uh, we see how he reveals his own nature before the readers. Now, Eliot modernizes the form. Now, Eliot uses this form of dramatic monologue uh, with a variation by removing the implied listener and focusing on Prufrock's interiority and isolation. So what he has done in this poem is that he has somewhere removed those implied listeners from dramatic monologue. And uh, when we look at Prufrock's uh, monologues, we see that uh, they reveal his uh, character as uh, being a person who is quite interior and is all alone. So this way, Eliot uh, uses a little bit of uh, deviation from what dramatic monologues were used by his predecessors. Now let's continue with the text. And I have known the eyes already known them all, the eyes that fix you in a formulated phrase. And when I'm formulated, sprawling on a pin, when I'm pinned and wriggling on the wall. But here sprawling on a pin and wriggling on the wall, uh, it refers to pinning of insect specimens uh, for study. And uh, these lines suggest that Prufrock also feels uh, similarly scrutinized by people uh, and uh, the way uh, society looks at him, uh, he feels quite conscious about it and uh, he is afraid to uh, face people and this makes him more isolated. So uh, here the main reference is to the social gaze. Uh, so he says that I have known the eyes already, known them all. He he's knows that how people scrutinize uh, him. And, uh, and then he gives uh, this in a symbol of uh, an insect that is uh, basically uh, used for a specimen study. So he himself also feels like a specimen in front of society. And how should I begin to spit out all the butt ends of my days and ways? And how should I presume? Now this shows that uh, Prufrock, as a character, he has been living a very odd life and it's very difficult for him uh, to talk about the buttons of his days and ways because his life has been like a used up cigarette. And then again, there's a question, and how should I presume? This again shows that Prufrock lacks that boldness. So he keeps on anticipating something instead of doing something about it. 
and I have known the arms already, known them all, arms that are braceleted and white and bare, but in the lamplight, downed with light brown hair. Now, with this image of uh, uh, knowing the arms and uh, uh, in the lamplight with the light brown hair, uh, we see that Prufra gives a specific observation, and this specificity of his shows the impact of 19th century French symbolists who thought that life could be represented only by symbols. So these the symbols of uh, arms and bare arms and uh, down with light brown hair, all these symbols, they express Prufox emotional life. And we see that uh, Prufox somewhere over here, he isolates the body part from the rest of the body. So he is not talking about uh, the whole body, rather he's talking only about the arms and uh, uh, this uh, talking specifically about uh, one body part, this multiplies the power of eyes and social gaze. That how people look at um, Prufak and how powerful social gaze is, somewhere these, this specificity shows this uh, through these lines. Is it perfume from a dress that makes me so digress? So here we see that again, uh, Prufrock has uh, shifted from the point uh, he's, dis he's digressed and uh, he's not uh, ready to share that uh, question with that woman he wants to. And uh, uh, we see that anxiety is the foremost concern over here and Prufrock continues to show his inability over here. So he again refers to those arms that lie along a table or wrap about a shawl and should I then presume and how should I begin? So he wants to say something but what he wants to say is still unknown and he is absolutely unable and he's not at all ready that how he should begin if he ever wishes to say that crucial thing, if he ever wishes to say uh, something that is important, uh, he is so much uh, full of anxiety and tension and fear that uh, he does not know that how he should begin his thing because he knows that once he speaks those things out, the things around him or the people behavior around him won't remain the same. Shall I say I have gone at dusk through narrow streets and watched the smoke that rises from the pipes of lonely men in shirt sleeves leaning out of windows? Now, uh, again, the image that he presents over here is of loneliness uh, going at dusk time on narrow streets, walking and watching the smoke rising from the pipes and referring to lonely men in shirt sleeves leaning out of windows. All these images are the images of loneliness, but we uh, see that uh, somewhere Prufrock also wishes to talk about his loneliness, but he is unable to do so. And then further he writes, I should have been a pair of ragged claws scuttling across the floors of silent seas. Now this is an image of a crab. Ragged claws means crab. Uh, the, he compares himself to an image of a crab where crab uh, somewhere symbolizes uh, self-protection. And uh, you can also see it as an alternative image of debasement because this is the third animal association that he has present over here because first he has uh, somewhere we can connect um, proof of to cat and then to insect and uh, somewhere this connection to animals uh, show proof rock as quite pathetic and lonely. Let's analyze the poem that we have done until now. Perhaps the most significant dispute lies over the overwhelming question. Uh, which Prufrock wishes to ask and uh, he's not able to. Many believe that Prufrock is trying to tell a woman of his romantic interest in her, point to the various images of women's arms and clothing. So because he's pointing to various images of women, uh, readers somewhere guess that uh, maybe he's uh, trying to tell women of his romantic interest in her and he's scared to do so. Others, however, believe that Prufrock is trying to express some deeper philosophical insight or disillusionment with society, uh, but fears rejection, pointing to statements that express a disillusionment with society. 
uh, it can be uh, a woman to whom he wants to uh, tell about his romantic interest. And some of uh, the readers, they believe that maybe Prufok is trying to express some philosophical ideas uh, about society, but he knows that the moment he talks about his uh, uh, disillusionment, uh, people are going to reject him or um, because he has used uh, the phrases like, I have measured out my life with coffee spoons. Many believe that the poem is a criticism of Edwardian society and proof of dilemma represents the inability to live a meaningful existence in the modern world. Somewhere he feels that he won't be understood properly and it's absolutely impossible to have a meaningful existence in the modern times. We'll continue with the poem in my next session. Thanks.